So magazines are a great way for you to find really cool images, patterns, shapes, and quotes. So whenever you get magazines in your mailbox, take advantage and scavenge for pictures that really catch your eye. I found lots of cool images and patterns that I can use in my journal spreads, and I especially love the black and white photos I found because I could really make a cool vintage spread with it. And scrapbook papers and die cuts can be expensive, so magazines are a great way to find these items. Next, we are going to make some washi tapes. Get a piece of paper and make lines that are about one inch thick, but you can make them any size you want. They can be thick washi tapes or thin washi tapes, whatever you prefer. Then just color it in and draw, and you can be as creative as you want. I'm not the best when it comes to drawing, but I tried my best. So once you're done, cut out all your pieces until they look something like this. Now let's grab some double-sided tape and place it in the back of all your sheets and once you're ready to use them, peel them off the back and stick it onto your paper. And to store them, you can roll them up like actual washi tape rolls and use a piece of tape to keep it together. Now we're going to do the same technique but with scrapbook paper. Cut them into long strips and place the tape on the back and this is a great way to use any strips of paper you have left over from a project. And now we have all these beautiful washies. So for the stickers, we're going to need some thermal label printer or you can find sticker paper at your local store like at a Walmart or an Office Max. So for these stickers, I used different stamps I had and put them all over the paper. Once I was done, I cut them all up and once I was ready to use them, I just peeled off the back and put it on my paper just like that. And now for these girl stickers, I've gotten a lot of questions about this so I'm going to show you an easy way that you can get these really cute stickers. So I printed all of these out from Pinterest and you can print out whatever images you like for this and that's why this project is really really fun. So once they're printed, cut out all of your images and I'm going to be showing you three different techniques to turning these into stickers. The first one is by using the double sided tape and this is so simple, once you're ready to use the sticker just peel off the back and paste it onto your paper. The next technique is going to be with a glue stick and this is by far my favorite one. Get your cutout and cover the back in glue and set it aside so that it can dry and this is only going to take a few minutes. But once they're dry you're going to want to put a little bit of water onto the back and this is actually going to activate the glue and then you're ready to stick it onto your paper. And lastly, we're going to use packaging tape. So you're going to cut a piece of tape or however big it takes to fit all of your pieces in and you're going to put it on a piece of paper or parchment paper, whatever you prefer. And then you're going to display all of your cutouts face up and then grab another piece of packaging tape and place it on top. Then you're going to cut out all of your images and once you're ready to use it, you're going to peel off the back and place it into your journal. Now we're going to make a memo pad. Yes, that's right, a memo pad. So get a piece of paper and it can be a black sheet or scrapbooking paper, whatever you like. And we're going to cut out three by three inch squares. 
You can add as many sheets as you'd like into your memo pad, but I just used about 15 to 20 sheets because it's going to bulk up after with the decorations that I put. So since I chose white paper, I decided to decorate my pages with this floral washi tape and you can decorate yours however you like and you can even draw your designs. So once you're done, get all of your papers and stack them neatly. Get your liquid glue out and I'm using Mod Podge for this and you're going to want to add the layer of glue to the top of the memo pad with a thin layer of glue at a time. I coated it about 5 to 8 times but you can add it until you're satisfied. So then you're going to leave it aside to dry and once you're done you have something that looks like this. Now we're going to make a journal and I'm using these leftover sheets that I had from when I made the memo pad so we're just going to make a mini journal. So you're going to want to get all of your sheets of paper and we're going to fold all the papers in half and set it aside so that we can work on the cover. And once your cover is ready, get all of your papers and assemble it with the cover. And to bind the journal, we're going to use the simplest technique, which is just stapling the spine of the journal. So get your stapler and you can staple it either two times, I did it three times, just to secure it. And lastly, we're going to make some journal tags, and I love adding these into my journal spreads or to just have on the side, but you're going to choose your cardstock paper, and I chose these really pretty patterned ones, but you can use white cardstock or brown, and we're going to cut them into long strips. I made mine one inch thick and marked the other side every two inches so I can get three tags. Now we're going to get our hole puncher and we're going to punch half circles at each corner and you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to score it so we're able to rip the tags later. And we're going to do this by adding tiny holes where we'll be ripping the tags. Then you should have something that looks like this. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you can get a needle or anything that will punch small holes, but please be careful with this step. You don't have to do this step if you don't want, but I decorated a few of them, and this one I decorated with some fabric, book pages, and a butterfly stamp.
and then I decorated these with a butterfly stamp but you can always leave yours blank because it looks really pretty with the pattern it already has okay hi everybody so i finally finished this video and this actually took me a while it took me like two days to film this but i had a lot of fun doing this and i learned new things that i didn't know before so i'm just gonna go through everything that i made and just talk with you guys about it and how much i enjoyed it um but yeah what's the first thing okay so the first thing that i did were these cutouts and this is more of like scrapbook papers you can find so if you use a magazine scrapbook papers especially scrapbook packs of paper can be um, expensive the paper pads can cost you like ten dollars for a mini one they can be expensive so um, if you get your magazines from the mail you can always cut out really cool interesting things like I found this picture and I kind of cut out this is these are like stairs that rug is really pretty um you know you can find pictures of of people like i really like this i've been really loving vintage journal spreads and vintage um stationery so something like this i would love to put in like some little art piece you can get maybe like an art book or something and cut pieces out but i found a lot of like fun pieces that i can use for my journal spreads or just making like a little art piece like maybe doing a collage on this and have this be like the background so there's a lot of things and this is galaxy see um i also cut out these strips of these winter or snowflakes and i thought this would be good for when i start to make winter spreads or like christmas spreads because i'm getting a lot of recommendations on that but i'm not going to do them yet until december so this would be perfect um, and these long strips are also good to make the washi tapes. I'm gonna show you next the washies. So that's a really good idea too. But there's lots of cool things that I found. Like this is cool in a journal spread. But I found a lot of things. You can probably find a lot of cooler things if you have like an art magazine and, and stuff like that, like cutting out shapes or things for your journal spread. So magazines are really good to cut out like fun images, maybe flower designs and, and stuff like that, really pretty patterns. So I had fun with this one and I'm going to be going back to my magazine again and just flipping through it to find more stuff. You can always go to the dollar store. Also, I know the dollar store has like really interesting magazines for a dollar, you know. So, yeah, the next thing is the washi tapes. So I've never done this before and it was really fun. So I started off. I, I showed you two different ways you can do it. So the first way that I did it was by you coloring. So you kind of you can make it honestly as big or as little as you want but i just did it this size and then you can color it i used some markers i didn't like it i don't really like the way it came out just because i'm not really good at drawing or art unless it's on procreate that's a lot easier but i don't really you know it's not my favorite i'm probably not going to use these but i just wanted to show you what you can do you can always draw on it this is also good if you don't have cardstock paper because i use cardstock paper to do my other washi rolls but you know you draw on it you paint on it you can use watercolor which is also a good idea and you know you can maybe draw little designs or you can use a stamp but you cut it out and you roll it up and the way i stuck it was by getting this tape that's double-sided and you peel it off so i cut a piece i stuck it on here but the back of it is like paper so you can peel it off whenever you're ready to use it so that is a good thing to have on hand i use that tape a lot for a lot of these projects um but i loved these washi rolls i used my cardstock papers for this and they came out so pretty this one's so nice i love this one i'm definitely gonna be using this in a journal spread i have this b1 i really like the way these came out these are my favorite ones very pretty so yeah if you have like you know when you're using or you're doing a journal spread or you're doing a craft and you maybe have leftover scraps of paper and you know what to do with it you can make washi rolls so that's always a good idea okay so next are the stickers i've gotten a lot of comments asking how to do girl stickers without printer i i did it both ways i showed you how you can do it if you have a printer and then if you don't have a printer so the first one were these stickers for this i used a thermal label printer if you don't have thermal paper that's fine i mean they sell, sell it on amazon i'll link it down below you can also find it at office max probably 
but I had thermal printer, so I was gonna use that. If you guys have it, then this is a good, fun thing you can do. And if you have stamps, I kind of just stamped onto the, the paper and then I cut it. And then when I'm ready to use it, I just peel off the back because the thermal label printers are, you know, sticker form. So that's why I use this, which is a really good idea and fun and, and easy and super fast to, to make stickers. I also did um, these, I cut out, if you have cardstock paper and you have like, maybe cutout stamps or anything like that, or you have cardstock paper and you saw a really pretty design, you can always cut that out into the shape and then use this tape to put a piece on the back. That way when you're ready to use it, you just peel off the sticker backing and then paste it into your journal. So I absolutely love this. This is really good to have on hand if you're gonna be making a lot of stationary products. So the other stickers that I made, for the girls, I used three different techniques. I used one with this tape, which are these. I just stuck a piece of it on the back. So again, when I'm ready to use it, I just peel it off and stick it into my paper. And that worked very, very well. That one was this one. So the second one is a technique using glue. So you get a glue stick. Um, where are they? You just get a glue stick and then you just glue the back part of it. So that's what I did. And then you have to leave it to dry. So once it's dry, you can store these away. And once you're ready to use it, you get a little bit of water. And I got my brush. You get a little bit of water and then you start, you know, putting the a little bit of water on the back and you saw how it turned like purple. That was the glue coming through. And then you stick it. And this one was a great technique. I love this one. And I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these. That way I can store the stickers away and then use them for later. But it sticks very, very well. And I love that technique, it was one of my favorites. And the last technique was with, where is it? The last technique was with some packaging tape. So you put a piece of this onto paper or wherever. A lot of people use parchment paper, but that doesn't really work for me, it's hard to peel off. And then you lay the stickers down and then you lay another piece of tape over it and you get this. You start to cut out the shape after. And I like to make the border a lot bigger. Don't try, I've tried cutting it as close because sometimes I like it, you know, just the figuring. Sometimes I don't like that whole white space. But for this, it's best if you leave a big enough border like this. That way the tape actually sticks onto the, the paper like this. And you could barely see it because it's clear, so you can't really see it. And at the same time, I kind of do like seeing the, pack, the, the tape around it. I don't know, I kind of like it, but this one worked very well as well. So you guys can do that and it's very fun if you guys have packaging tape on hand. If not, you can get it, it's like, I don't know, two something. Um, okay, so next, and these are fun. I loved making these girl stickers. Oh, by the way, I printed these out from Pinterest. So you can go to Pinterest, you can find a ton of cute little aesthetic photos or pictures or butterflies, flowers or girl cartoon girls and you can make your own stickers like that. So these were really fun. I love these techniques. They're amazing. Okay, so next thing I did were tags. So a lot of people like to use like these little tags for their journal spreads. A lot of journal spreads that I've seen, a lot of them like these and so these are super fun to make. If you have a hole puncher then you just, you know, do these half circles. These are really really fun and I did three different ones. I just left this one blank. I just left it, you know, you could either have like white cardstock paper or brown cardstock paper, that way you can decorate it your own way. You know, you can put some cute stickers and do it however you like, or you can just get some nice cardstock paper and you can leave it like that and have that be your, your little tags, just like this. I left that one alone. I had this pink one, but I decorated it with this little, like just some paper and this fabric piece that I had there and just a butterfly stamp, but this is what it looks like. And it came out super pretty. I love the way this one came out. Or you can just, you know, have a stamp. If you have a stamp, you can just stamp on them and have that be your piece. And so what I did was I used my sewing machine and I kind of just sewed down here. And then that way it's already like this actually works. It actually cuts like a tag, which is so cool. So this one came out really pretty. And this is a really fun project to do. You can use up whatever pieces you have in your, you know, stationary bin and use up whatever scraps you have and do this this is also good if you have like long strips of paper that you you have left over from doing another project you can make this out of that so that's always good okay, so next is the journal and i got a lot of comments of on how to do a diy 
journal so i did a mini one i didn't want to do a full one i did a mini one just because these were scraps of paper that i had left over from this project so i just got a colorful or a cute vintage cardstock paper and i just folded up all these sheets of paper in half and then i made this my cover i put a little doily i put a little stamp wording stamp there and you have this really cute journal you can always put an elastic cord here in the back that way you can tie this or bind it that way it like keeps closed but i just put this here just because i didn't have the elastic cord right now i couldn't find it but yeah you have this really cute mini journal and i'm gonna be making some journal spreads in this for my short videos the ones that i post on here on my channel so this was really fun to do i really like the way it came out this is so easy to do you know i just used the easiest technique which was just stapling it you can put one staple or two i did three but it's super easy and that's it you just get papers get make a cute little cover and then just staple it together down the spine of the journal and yeah you have your journal and there's different ways of binding it but i like it this way just because it's the easiest i don't feel like sewing it together it takes a lot longer but yeah okay so the last one is this this is probably my favorite these memo sheets now these aren't sticky notes because you can't really stick them onto like the paper but if i just learned this technique with the glue maybe you can put a bit of glue on the back like the top of the the sheets and then have those dry and then glue them together that way when you do peel them off you can maybe put some water and stick it down but i'm not going to do that just because that's a lot more work for just a memo sheet but yeah these are just more memos that you can just write notes on or whatever you want them for but this is so pretty i love this i'm going to be making more memo sheets and I just love this idea. This is such a fun way to make your own memo sheets. You know, I just decorated it with a bit of washi tape. It's like very floral, really pretty. And then you get them all together and then you just glue the top of it. And then once that dries, then that's it. You have your memo sheets and it works so well. I love the way, like, look at how well that works. I'm so surprised, <laughs> like, I'm so surprised that that worked. I don't know. I don't know why I doubted that it would. But so this was such a fun video to make. Thank you everybody for recommending this video. But yeah, if you guys tried any of these, let me know down in the comments which one you guys tried, which one was your favorite to make, or which one was your favorite to to watch. But if you guys made any of these, then DM it to me on Instagram or tag me if you post it on your Instagram because I would love to share it on my stories and I would love to see what you guys made and what you guys created but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you all next week bye